everybody, I'm Nadine Brandis, the author of Fox, Romanov, and the Out of Time series, and I come to you today with a special guest, also known as the Halfling. Many of you probably know that I had a baby. He's being super chill right now. Good job. It's because he's really tired to come to you to talk a little bit about rhythms. I was asked a lot while I was pregnant, how am I going to still write or am I even going to continue writing? And now that I'm seven weeks into mommyhood, I have a better idea of what writing is going to look like with a tiny human in my life that I'm taking care of every day. I also just wanted to introduce you to him so you can see a little bit live action halfling instead of just the photos that I post on Instagram. I was gonna put him in some super cute like fandom shirt. He has a lot of fandom shirts. He's got Batman, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, all of the different fandoms that several of you, my wonderful readers, followers, and friends have sent to him and I have loved dressing him up. But today's kind of cold and he's really relaxed and chill in his little sheep onesie. So I figured I should choose my battles, especially because it's taken me at least four days to set all of this up and look like a human to be able to film a video. Blah. I wasn't sure whether to make this a writing video or a talking baby video. It's kind of outside of my norm. So I had this grand idea of what having the halfling would be like. I wanted to have a completely non-intervention birth, not because I'm against those, but just because that was how I wanted to try and have a baby. And that's not what happened because halfling was huge. He was born nine pounds, 10 ounces with a unusually large head. <laughs> I labored for 22 hours. And even though that process went differently than what I had initially hoped it would be. It was still exactly what it needed to be and it was perfect and there's not a single moment of it that I look back on and I'm like, man, I wish I would have done that different. I'm so happy just that he's here and he's healthy and that his story was unpredictable. But leading up to him coming, I was hearing lots of different advice, which is what happens when you're pregnant. And it's also what happens when you've had the baby. Advice comes from everybody. But I knew that this was going to be a life change. I knew that this was going to be a rhythm change. I knew that my typical daily patterns of writing were going to have to change. And so knowing that I wanted to come into motherhood with as blank of a slate as I possibly could schedule wise. So I spent the nine months of pregnancy preparing my schedule and preparing my publisher and saying no to new projects and slowly stepping back from commitments so that when he came I didn't have this giant to-do list and instead I could create a brand new schedule and a brand new rhythm of life that meant motherhood and writing. I also expected motherhood to be really demanding and outside my comfort zone because I wasn't like born to be a mom. There are some women out there who they just know they want to be a mom. That's their passion. They're, those are their gifts. My mom is like that. She had five children and she's an amazing mother. My husband and I were married almost seven years before we had Halfling. Also, I'm not a baby person, that's probably gonna sound wrong. You know how there are some people where if they see a baby, they're, it's just like, oh, the baby, and I'd love to hold him. It just excites them. But when I saw like babies or children out in the wild, it wasn't like, oh my gosh, I want to hug them and I want to look at them. I just love all of the baby things. Um, that's not my personality. I don't want you guys to think that I hate children or something like that. I am not Umbridge. And when I did hold babies, I maxed out. I definitely maxed out in my like holding them-ness. After like a half hour, I'm totally ready to pass them back to mom. It wasn't like, I can never get enough. I could always get enough. So I was kind of nervous that I would be the same way with my baby. I'm also an introvert, which a lot of people are surprised by that. And so then thinking there's gonna be another human in the house 24 seven with me, that is my charge to take care of and keep alive. Uh, that 
was a lot to think about. So just coming into motherhood, I was nervous about those things. He arrived and it's been seven weeks and I have yet to ever feel anything negative toward him. I definitely cannot get enough of holding him or snuggling him or looking at him. It's like all of the baby things, you guys, that they talk about like, oh, you're just gonna love him so much. You're not gonna know how in the world you can feel so much love. And this is so true. <laughs> and I knew like, I knew that people said that, but it was hard to imagine that actually happening. So it's been so exciting because I'm like, I'm not irritated at you. I'm not tired of you. And in fact, I'm like, don't grow up at all. Don't learn new things. Just stay exactly how you are. I mean, of course I want him to grow up and learn new things, but he's just so wonderful. So I love being a mom. I love being a mom. I have not felt like my introverted self has been invaded. I feel more like he's entered into the bubble and he's allowed in that bubble forever. And because he arrived at the perfect time when I had kind of cleared, <laughs> when I had kind of this blank slate of a schedule, it doesn't feel like writing is competing for my attention or that halfling is competing for my attention. Oh, he's kind of gassy. Okay. I'll be right back. Halfling is now in the bouncy chair at my feet, out of your view. I'm sorry. Actually, I could put him up here. Ah. Ha! I have won this challenge. Now you can still see him and he can fall asleep. Fist bump. Now that about seven weeks have passed, I've started figuring out where I'm going to be able to squeeze back in the writing and find that balance. And I know that his rhythms are going to change pretty much every week because he's growing and he's growing very quickly. <laughs> Don't grow. Don't listen to what I just said. You just ignore that. That's the only time that you're allowed to ignore what mommy says. But I've realized that the key to this entire mommyhood thing has been flexibility. It has served me so well. But I have noticed that my new rhythm is that I have about three to four hours a day now to do things. Writing things, cooking things, to clean the house, dishes, laundry, social media, marketing. I have to really choose my battles. Thankfully, I have a very supportive husband. Even this morning, which our house is still in disarray, this little area that you're seeing, I spent my morning's hour cleaning this up so that it looks like I live in a clean environment, but I'm a messy person. And this morning my husband said, what's on your agenda today? I said, well, I'm probably gonna clean up the writing room. And he goes, oh, okay. And I said, and hopefully I'm going to write. And he's like, good, that's my husband. He's like, oh, you're gonna clean, okay, if you have to. Go write! So I'm gonna write today, hopefully, we'll see. So on the writing front, if anything, even though my time is more limited, I am actually more inspired. And I think that's because I anticipate sitting down and writing, knowing, okay, with his next nap, I'm gonna make some tea and I'm gonna go write, which by the way, tea has been the battle. If I get through a cup of tea in a day, and it's hot, ho oh, victory. So I'm learning the new rhythms, I'm learning when I can write, I'm learning what marketing looks like, and prior to having Halfling, I worked on marketing a good two hours a day, and now I just can't do that. I've learned that it's okay if I can't keep up on all of the comments and all of the messages and all of the tags and all of that, and I've just become a bit more efficient, and I expect to become even more efficient the longer I'm a mom. Thankfully, I had a very, very smooth pregnancy. Everything went the way it was supposed to go. I was very healthy. Baby was very healthy in all the right positions, everything. And then I had a really good delivery. And now, seven weeks in, I mean, I don't wanna say he's an easy baby, but he sleeps well, he doesn't cry that often. I'm probably jinxing myself. Um, he's really good natured, even though he was super serious his first month of life. He's getting a bit more smiley. He eats well, we've figured out the whole eating thing. That was a process, guys. 
I have had only positive experiences with motherhood so far. I have loved every second, even waking up in the middle of the night, even changing the poopy diapers, which I was planning like, how can I get my husband to change most of them? Because I am dreading that. But now that baby's here, it's like, I don't care. Oh, poop, don't care. Pee, don't care. You barfed on me, don't care. It's really weird. But so cool. It's like the superpower of not being bothered by gross things. And I realize that that is not every mom's story. And I am extremely blessed to have had such a smooth transition and that Halfling came during the perfect time in my writing career where I'm able to take this breather and I'm able to step back from things and really focus on creating new rhythms and being a mom as well as being a writer. I had this one moment, I'd say within the first two or three weeks of having him, and I was just soaking in every second of this tiny little person. And there was this moment where I thought, I don't ever have to write again and I would be happy. And that was really scary, actually, to realize how content I would be just being a mom because that was so not me prior to having him. Of course, I'm going to still keep writing and now that some more time has passed and new stories have come in, I'm excited and I'm sitting down and I've been plotting for the past few days, but it was a testament to all of the change that God has done in my heart and mind toward motherhood and all of the ways that he's blessed me that I could even think that and still be happy. Look at this, he fell asleep and I'm talking very loudly. So it's been a really cool process and I'm excited that now almost two months in, I'm creating a new normal and I'm able to mesh my two passions, my new passion of motherhood and my old passion of writing and that they're working together and it's just so fun. Sometimes I just wake up and I feed him and then we go sit in the kitchen and I make a cup of tea and he's in his little bouncy chair and we just hang out and I write and he's just awake looking at light and and it feels like this special shared time that we get to have where I get to be creative and be with my son. I feel like this video was a little bit of a ramble. I hope that it helps inspire some of you who are maybe trying to mesh a new walk of life with your passion with writing. I know that I hear this a lot from college students that they're not sure how to combine the demands of college with their passion of writing, especially if they're majoring in something not writing related. Um, and even if they are, just the homework and the schedules and the mental exhaustion that comes from schoolwork, it's a lot. And I, I hardly wrote at all during college. The key is to continue being flexible and figuring out what those new ryth rhythms look like. And if they don't look like old rhythms, that's okay. If suddenly you're not writing five or six hours a day and you're just squeezing in a half hour, that is okay. Another thing is that stepping away and not actually putting words on a page doesn't mean that you're putting it on hold. Let me explain. When I was in college, all of my classes and all of my relationships and friendships and experiences and heartaches and hurt and just life that I lived still grew me as a writer even though I wasn't sitting down and writing new stuff. It grew me in life. It grew my experiences. It grew my thought process. And then the next time I sat down and wrote, the book that came out was A Time to Die, which was then my first published book. And I remember looking at it and I was like, I haven't written in four years and this is the best writing that has ever come out of my fingers. It was so mind boggling because I thought, wait, but I'm supposed to be rusty. I'm supposed to be out of practice. And I wasn't. I had actually grown as a writer even though I wasn't putting words on a page. So I expected that with mommyhood that even if I wasn't writing, I was going to grow as a writer. And I hope that that is encouraging to all of you who are starting a new job or moving out or handling demanding classes or just life experiences that feel like they're taking you away from the ability to sit down and write, but they're not. They're actually going to grow you as a writer so that the next time you sit down and write, it's going to be even better than when you wrote before. Life is part of your toolbox, my friends. So that's kind of the life update on me. Thank you everyone for being so patient and tolerant of my inconsistent video schedule the past two months as I was figuring out mommyhood. That was another thing that I thought, okay, I'm just, I'm not going to feel guilty about not filming videos because I need to focus on figuring out how to keep a tiny human alive. Also how to function off of very little sleep. I guess with that, I'll sign off. Tally ho!